Hey, it's Dr. David, the ENT doctor again. Uh, I get asked about nasal surgery in children and there's a procedure called a septoplasty, uh, which is a great source of debate and also uh, confusion. So I will try and give you some background as to why this is the case and why there's genuine concerns and also give you some feedback as to what I do and why I do. So, let's go through some anatomy. So the middle part of the nose, okay, it's called the septum. And my job, to be honest, is really easy. There's two sorts, straight ones and crooked ones. And if it's crooked, then we call that a deviated septum. Rocket science, right? Problem with a deviated septum is that it affects the way the air flows through the nose and can compromise things to the degree that people are then forced to mouth breathe. Now you would think that if it was in the middle part of the nose but it was just crooked off to one side, you go, well that makes one side bad, but hey, it makes the other side better. The problem is it's not as simple as that. And the reason for that is that within the nose, coming from the side walls of the nose, there are swellings. Dun, dun, dun. And when the septum is deviated, okay, so that's just, it's deviated that way because I don't have enough. Yeah, all right. These swellings, which are called turbinates, change in size. So it's crooked that way, makes the turbinate on the side it's crooked to go smaller, but it makes the turbinate on the other side go bigger. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to even it out. So the side that it's deviated to, it's making that turbinate smaller so that there is more room, but then the nose goes, well, hang on, that's not the same as the other side, so that actually makes the good side bad, which is obviously counterproductive. So when we are faced with a situation, in general, we have a deviated septum, it's very common that we'll also do nasal turbinate surgery because those nasal turbinates have become dysfunctional. Uh, they don't know what they're supposed to do anymore. They're, the one's too big, one's too small. Um, so we trim them back just to basically open up the channels, rebore the channels, and reset things. So when it comes to doing that in adults, that's no controversy, block nose, unblock. When it comes to children, uh, we're always worried because you know, we're interfering with things that are still growing. And when it comes to the septum, uh, just a quick a little basic anatomy, uh, and the front part of the septum is made of cartilage and the back part is made of bone. And then that cartilage and bone slot and groove into each other and they do it along the bottom part of the nose, so the bottom part of the nose, uh, and they also do it around the back part of the nose. And if we interfere with those things, we're worried that the nose may not grow properly. And there's been research where they do in animals where they, they did quite destructive surgery actually, uh, and, and confirmed that, that it didn't grow. But we are not in the, in, into the business of destruction. Uh, we're into the business of reconstruction. And when I sort of was, was coming across this, my, my teaching, and it was absolute dogma, is you, you never operate on the, the septum of a child. And then when I went and did my pediatric work, uh, not only did we start operating on septums of children, uh, we had things like we were doing rhinoplasty surgery on children as well, because they had associated nasal uh, deviation uh, and, and, and functional problems. And you feel a little bit out of your depth when you start doing it, but then you start to realize that there is more than one way to look at the world. And in doing that, you go back and then look at the literature. And the literature is, is, is pretty contemporary if you look at the past 10 years, showing a growing number of pediatric ear, nose and throat uh, specialists uh, running the gauntlet of dogma and helping children breathe better. And the research shows that when that's the case, uh, these children actually function a lot better. Uh, their breathing is better, their sleep is better. And more importantly, the concerns that we have about whether it might affect the way that you know, the nose and the nose is connected to the face may grow um, doesn't seem to be the issue that it was made out to be, which is great news. Now, that's not to say that everybody should you know, feel that they can just jump on board. You, you, everybody does things differently. Um, as I've highlighted, I, know I don't do all ear, nose and throat things and I, I send it to people that do uh, specialise in certain areas. So I don't expect people to change their practices just because I said so, um, and, or in fact because the literature says so. 
Um, you, you've got to work within the degree of confidence, but I think it's also um, you know, important just to show that there are people out there doing these procedures and there is research and evidence that backs up the case that this is okay. So for me, when I do it, I um, always sort of steer on the conservative side of the fence. Uh, I really focus mostly on those turbinates and also the adenoids if they're a problem behind to really just open up the space. And then if that septum's out of, space, out of alignment, if it's a septum that we can just nudge and push back into place, or if it's a simple one where it's just coming down and it's just got a little bit of a bump, they're, they're, they're the great ones to get to and, 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 and sort things out. Um, and just knowing that, you know, with further growth and development, you know, and, and to be honest, kids' trauma, um, it may go crooked again. We may need to sort it out again. That's, that's just how it is. But at least we can get things open. Um, certainly don't want to be too aggressive um, because we can run into problems um, in terms of scar tissue formation and so forth. Uh, but uh, there you go. So paediatric septoplasty, it is a real thing, as is paediatric rhinoplasty. Um, we're not doing the rhinoplasty to make them look good. It's what we call functional rhinoplasty to make the nose work well. So it is all doable. It is all possible. Um, it's not offered by everybody, and that's okay. But again, just so people know, it is a real thing that is out there. Cheers.